my name is Rich Wilson and today I brought you to the fabulous Allcroft Fisheries. I'm going to run you through how I would approach a silverfish session in the colder months. Leaves are falling off the trees, carp have shut up shop and I'm just going to run you through little tips, tricks, how I can get the most out of my swim and hopefully catch a few fish. There's a few silvers in this lake so hopefully we should get a few bites. All across a decent venue, fish it winter, summer, got fond memories, fished it since a kid. So I just want to show you how I'm going to approach today and how I'm going to prep my bait. In these colder months, I prep my ground bait a little bit different. I want to take all the feed content out of what I use. Because at some point in day, I'm, I want to be able to introduce the feed, but I don't want to introduce it at the start. And by sieving your ground bait, it's a good way to show you exactly what is in your bait. A good mix for me has been F1 Sweet, black, dark, and I also like to make it a little bit greeny until the colour really drops out of the water. And then I want to add a bit of fish meal content, so I might use, I'm going to either use a match method dark or the 50-50 uh, method paste green. And I'll show you what the bits in these and why I use it and what I take out. So my mix is going to be, I'm going to save one pint of green, one pint of dark, So one millimetre flour sieve, it'll take any particles that the fish can physically eat out of your ground bait. And then I'm going to use one pint total of, this is the fish meal that's going to get me some flavour into the water of 50-50 green and match method. And you can see how many particles were left in the sieve in the stronger one. Uh, these are what I don't want to go into the peg at first because they're what fish can eat. But I'm going to save them. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the particles. They're like pellets. I do not want to feed them at start, but I don't want to chuck them away. So these are all part crushed pellet basings, so they will all sink. So at any point, I can add them to the feed if I feel I've got to put more fish meal in, more particles more feed content without putting more hook. The baits I'm putting on the hook, I don't necessarily want to feed because I only want sometimes my hook bait to be there. I want to attract the fish with the ground bait. I want to feed them with the particles I put through the feeder and hook, put on the hook. I don't really want to feed anything. I'm not going to put on the hook. So they'll be just put aside. Uh, if I don't use them, perfect for feeding in margins in summer. Or sometimes I'll put these back through a coffee grinder at home and every one of them will pass through a sieve and it gives me a potent fish meal mix that I can add to any skimmer mix, light mix, any mix at any time of year. This is, gives me a nice dark tingy green before I mix it up. And that sort of thing should, is going to be plenty enough for a session on a hard day winter feeding little amounts uh, little and often we're not going to be boshing it like we would in summer um, happy days right my bait choices for today are going to be Dead pinkies, fluoros, dead red maggots, 
Obviously my ground bait, what we've touched on, I have a few casters in case some bigger fish want to feed. I've got a few live maggots for hook, a few floating live maggots for hook, and I've obviously got my feed, what we've sieved out, what is there to add in if we need to at some point in the day. I've got my tub of water here. I've mixed my ground bait and I've left it and it's gone a bit dry now, but I want it like that because it's, I want to be able to change the consistency of my ground bait by adding bits of water, maybe fishing it dry, packing it in, slopping it up, changing it, different things that'll attract a fish maybe, follow your feeder down, take your bait what's on hook and you'll catch it. I've also, I've got a few worms and a few pellets, but I, I ideally don't want to put them in because I feel it'll attract the wrong style of fish into my peg. I want to catch some silvers, I want to have a, plenty of bites hopefully, um, we'll see and away we go. I've got a rod, I've got put an half ounce bomb on it, I've got two poles out here, in middle of the lake, I think an area it used to be attached to them. I don't ideally want to go near them because I feel I could get snagged on them, carp could hang around them. So I'm going to make one cast with a little bomb. I want to keep my casting to a minimum. We it being so hard, you don't want to be casting around your peg loads of times because it could spook fish, could move them off. I just want to make one cast, clip up, go back on my sticks. I'm going to start longer. Um, in the middle and then I've got other rods set up and at some point in the day I'm going to reintroduce a line in between the bank and where I'm going to start fishing. If there's a lot of small fish that line will be closer maybe 10 meters. If there's bigger fish it might be 15 meters, 18 meters but somewhere along here where people would normally fish a pole, people would um, wave poles around maybe spook fish I'm going to drop a little feeder on and hopefully set another line up and have fish um, keep the fish going all through the day. So I'm going to make one little cast. Exactly where I want to be. I'm going to clip up. And I'm going to put this on my sticks, find the exact distance, just in case I have to take the line clip off. If I hook a carp, big tench, I can let it go, land it, go straight back on my sticks, get bang on my distance and be fishing within seconds again. When I mention going onto my sticks, here's a little thing I do. The Aqualock, 1.95 meter old all, two sticks equal five centimeters, which gives me bang on two meters in total. Places like Southfield and that, I've stopped using ropes because I've tripped that many people up and it moves my sticks that I know I can set that up anywhere without av avoiding everyone not tripping anyone up, feeder on, each, each wrap's two metres, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. It is nearly twenty-six, so I'm going to go to twenty-six to be super accurate. One more. It's pointless trying to fish accurate and then just guessing. So we bang on 26 metres. feeder choice today is going to be, whereas in the summer we would bait up with this set, say this feeder and fish the medium one over the top introducing loads of bait and this and other that's going to be no good for winter so that one's going to be made redundant but it doesn't mean this one isn't going to come into play this is the medium zippler rider and the small uh, zippler riser in the cage I'm going to start on the 15 gram mini I feel 15 grams is going to get me to where I want to be today. I've also got 30 and a 20 gram on my tray, but I, unless the wind gets up or I really need to nail it on deck, I don't feel I'm going to do. So I will start on this feeder. And reason is the amount of bait I'm going to feed. You can see 
that is how much bait goes in a thing. And if my one up bait or couple of free offerings are on top, that's way enough to catch the fish in the winter. This size feeder, the medium, I may use to bait up if I feel I've one cast introduced a decent amount of feed into the peg um, without making multiple casts. And you can obviously see the, the amount of bait difference that that adds. And I just feel this little pile's more chance of catching me quick fish than this. But I cannot count that out because at some point in March, I may need to introduce a decent amount of feed in one go. My very first cast is going to be made with one dead red maggot hooked the right way, one dead red pinker hooked the wrong way. I'm not being tight, but I'm going to put five pinkies in my ground bait. I don't know how hard it's going to be. Last thing I want to do is introduce too much bait at the start and not be able to catch a fish. And there we have it. Not a massive fish, but it's a fish and on a little cold winter's day, it's nice to get a bite first chuck. Play it steady, because you never know. Tiny little skimmer, exactly what we were after. Slimy little thing. They're the bread and butter fish of winter, exactly what we were targeting. Nice little fish, I'm going to do exactly the same again with second cast. Five pinkies, work first time. Pinky and a maggot again. No need to change what's just worked. Bang on money. The last bite had a tiny little indication before the main bite. That could have been a bite, it also could have just been a little line as it were picking bait up. Just let it develop into a proper bite. You don't, you ideally want to be making as few casts as you want, uh, as you can in the winter. So as letting your bite develop and picking up when there's a fish on is the aim of the game in this thing, in this time of year. The tiny little sign there, just gonna that's a proper bite. And that is a well, I don't know if it is a bit better fish, but it's another welcome fish. That's two casts. Two proper bites. It's exactly what we wanted to do today. I'm only using dead light lines, so we're playing every fish to make it count. No need to pull their heads off. It's another tiny little skimmer. And that just shows the hooks come out in net. Didn't need to pull its head off. Lightly hooked. So I've just had a couple of fish, make my first, first few chucks, and I know there's a few fish there, so I can leave my peg. I'm just going to show you the rig I use. Could not be any more simple. Simpler it is, the less tangles you're going to get, the more fishing time. I've got a tiny little number 14 snap link swivel, which attaches straight to my feeder. Below that, I've got one tiny little number 8 stop, 
I'm not casting mega far, so I only need to put one on. I don't feel it's going to come off. If I were casting into distance, I would put two on just in case I lose one. But this is dead delicate fishing. I've then got a six inch tiny little twizzle boom that's just going to protect protect my um, line while it's round feeder in net and this and other. And then I've got a 50 centimeter O12 fluorocarbon up length to a tiny little 16 hook which is just perfect for one maggot or one maggot and a pinker. There is a second rig I have set up for the simple fact is where rules allow it and you can reduce hook length sizes or lengthen them depending on how you, how you feel your bites are. If you feel they're coming on the drop you're going to want a longer hook length. If you feel if you feel you're getting line bites and they're not taking the hook, they could be in your feeder. So as by this, I've got the same tiny little twizzle boom, one stop, but this time I've just put a tiny little homemade feeder link on. Uh, just gonna let me bite develop a bit more. But on this end, I've got a tiny, tiny, it's the same clip we use for an helicopter rig, but I've just fixed it to end of my twizzle boom and put a tiny piece of silicon to stop it rubbing in net. And that will allow me to put eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, two foot, five foot hook length on and quickly change in, out, carry on fishing without having to tie another loop onto a loop to loop. Just gives me that little bit of speed if I'm having to vary my up lengths all the time. But to start off with, I'm just gonna fish a fixed hook length one and take the session, see, see how it goes, see what size fish we're catching and what, how my bites work. If whenever I'm hitting bites, I feel there's no need to change. When I start missing bites, there's a few things I can do to make bites into fish I can reduce or lengthen my hook length. I can reduce my feed or add more feed. And the next option would be, I can put my floating maggots on if I feel they're on the drop and I want to keep my bait a bit more buoyant. I've just gone a two or three minute chuck now after them two fish without a bite. So I'm starting to think the fish come to the little splash of the feeder so I might leave this a few more seconds. If I don't get a bite, I'm going to keep, I'm going to have another chuck just to see if they've come to splash or I've spooked them and I need to sit a little bit longer for a bite. I expected to get another bite straight away, but I haven't. We'll have another quick chuck. Oh, and as we speak, we've picked up on one. <laughs> If you can't be good, be lucky. Now this has told me, I, I didn't have a bite and I've picked up on a fish. So my hook length now is telling me it were too long. I've, I've given this fish too much, I haven't uh, given this fish too much room to swim around and it won't give me a bite. So if, I, if this happens again, we will reduce the hook length in size. It's also a little bit better fish as well. It's not hooked deep, it's had it in lips, so we could have just picked up right at right time it were about to give us a bite, but either way, it's another one in net. We'll make one more chuck with this longer up length. If we don't get a quick sign or we get a bus bait, it's telling me the distance from my hook to my start is too long. Today, I'm using the yoga rest and I've bent the end up a little bit. Gives me two options, this. I get the use of a rest that I can adjust, uh, move it on the ripple bar. And also, if I get one L of a carp bite or a tench bite or something that tries to pull rod off rest, it ain't going anywhere. It's stopping. It's not going in. I'm not chasing it. I'm not losing any gear. It's absolutely perfect for the job. I can look away. I can go to my tray. I know that rod is not going to leave that rest. I can go in my tray, 
I can go in my ground bait, I can prep for my next cast, and I can look up and then if I need to, like I do now, I can just put a tiny bit more bend on rod on tip just by moving it down one ripple. It stays in that little groove and it is not moving. I've shortened my hook length off a little bit and that instantly was a way better bite. Proper pull it round, positive, no, no messing around. I'm using an 11 foot rod today. Don't need to go any bigger or smaller. It's a Supera SL, the super light version. I'm using an Extremite 520 reel with three pound Maxima on. I know the 520 might sound big, but it's got a big wide spool. It's a nice slow retrieve. It does exactly, it's perfect for this sort of fishing. Um, never let the size of the reel put you off if it's right for the job. I've, um, it's a nice slow wind. It's what I want for when I'm reeling these fish. So I can pick up, I can start reeling and I can just let the rod, the super soft rod, and I mean super soft. I think they designed for this sort of winter work. It's it's what they are. Like 11 foot, 11 foot, it's gonna cast me to 40 meters if I wanted to, but perfect for this 26 meters today. good advantage of these trays, this is the hooded tray, the hood is down, is that every one has a measure on here. So, halfway through a session, say you want to, I tie my hook lens up at a metre, but say you want to, for some reason, uh, you feel the fish are coming closer to the feeder, or you want to fish away from the feeder. So say I were getting loads of line bites and I weren't hooking many fish, I will go on my measuring sticks, and say I want to put a 350 centimetre, uh, 35 centimetre hook length on, or 350 mil. I will look, I will do it there. I'll just tie my loop, bang there. Snip my tag end off. And that, I know I am bang on 35 centimetres away from the hook. That is now ready to go on. Next cast, as soon as I come in. These are on all the trays, this one as well. Very, very important knowing how far away your hook bait is from your feeder. The nice little bit with that is I could tie all my hook lengths up to one metre long and I can adjust them on the day. And I know if I, say for instance, I started on a 50 centimetre hook length and that were the optimum length and I break off, I can go straight back on my markers, tie up 50 centimetre hook length, nip it off, put it on, and we're fishing straight away, exactly the same as we were before. I've been fishing on my longer line for a couple of hours now, and I've start, I'm catching some fish, I've started to get bites, it's just noticeably gone a little bit iffy. So I'm gonna use this time to pick up a rod I've now clipped up at 16 meters. I've put the bigger of the um, Zippler risers on. I'm gonna feed four or five of them, 16 meters. We have quite a few dead pinkies in, I leave it for 20 minutes and then hopefully it gives me the option to drop short, keep going long, rotating my lines, keep putting fish in net, keep bites coming. The, the longer I leave a line when I come off it, the quicker I will get the bite when I go back on. We're coming to the end of the session now. We've had a fantastic day. I've fed the short line and it's worked to treat. I've been able to catch a few fish, some better fish as well, some tench. I've kept chucking long and every time I've gone back long, there's always been a couple of skimmers there waiting. And if I could conclude one thing today, it's been, 
I've not caught a great deal on a shorter hook length. Every time I put a bit longer hook length away on, I've caught fish straight away. They haven't seemed to want to come near the feeder. Um, time of year, backing off, up in the water. Um, it, we don't know, but uh, definitely a longer hook length has been better today. But I cannot resist having one more cast, sorry.